Hey everyone, it's Dave from The Brain Bulwark, and I wanted to go over a presentation today about the basics of nootropics. And for those of you that's been following along with me, this might be a little below you guys where you're at right now in your journey in using nootropics, but for anyone else looking to catch up or completely new to the field, I just wanted to give you a basic 101 course on nootropics and some of the common concerns and questions that are asked. All right. So what is all the buzz about these cognitive enhancing pills? And we've heard things about the movie Limitless, about how it's cheating. So let's dive right in. I want to give you guys some clear, concise answers to these questions so you can make an educated decision on whether or not these nootropics and these health supplements are right for you. So, I may be biased, uh, I have a career in science, and I personally love to do research and look into things. So the fact that I can find an incredible amount of research supporting both cognitive performance and cognitive health benefits from nootropics really makes this decision a no-brainer for me. And more often than not, I find resistance towards the use of nootropics coming from individuals who haven't done the legwork and who haven't really delved into the research themselves. So I think that speaks volumes about the legitimacy and viability of nootropics. So here you can see the majority of nootropics have been studied in great depth. And for those that have less research behind them or relatively new to the field, I personally tend to shy away from those until they've kind of stood the test of time. So in our home study course, we really only stick to the tried and true nootropics. And we look for two things. We look for studies that have done mega dosing because this shows us that when we use it responsibly and stick within our target dosage per day, we're going to be free and clear of any side effects. And on top of that, we look for the health benefits. So the majority of the nootropics have in fact been used in treatment type clinical trials. So whether it's Alzheimer's, cognitive decline, memory impairment, anything like that, the fact that these nootropics are used as a treatment or something to delay the cognitive decline is a huge perk for us because why would why would they be performing clinical trials on the benefits and the treatment aspect of these nootropics if they weren't entirely safe with big upsides okay so right there anything that has treatment based research behind it is something that's a viable candidate for us all right and then we come to the ethics portion of nootropics and this is a big one and it might not be so black and white for some of you. Some of you might be on the fence. Some of you might see it as clear as day like I do. But I just wanted to touch base on a few different topics that people like to discuss. And then you can move forward with this new information. Okay, so as I said, I'm not going to try and sit here and tell you what you should believe or think. But... I would like to ask you to consider the following, okay? So one of the main issues with the ethics of nootropics is that they present this unfair advantage to the individuals using them and that you're somehow a leg up on everybody who's not using nootropics. So this has some inherent truth because now you have nootropics and they don't. I get that. But the real issue with the core of this statement is that it's implying there's an initial level playing field as if everybody was born into the same situation given the same access to the same education resources support everything else that goes into your success as if that were the same and then taking nootropics all of a sudden now gave you an advantage over everyone else and, and this just sounds crazy to me so the idea of this level or 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 unfair playing field 
is just a straw man argument. It makes no sense. And when we realize that and we sort of go over that concept in our mind and become familiar with it, we realize that a lot of the people posing that argument to go against nootropics really have some sort of biases against it or just the overall lack of education about nootropics. Because the fact of the matter is we're all born into situations that differ. There's an infinite amount of variables that affect our abilities and our success. And with that said, the option to take nootropics to positively impact your own success and your own journey seems like a no-brainer, no pun intended. So really, the whole ethics question on nootropics, it's not as big of a deal as people make it out to be. The fact of the matter is, we take supplements like vitamin C for immune system or, or whatever the case may be. And they're no different than nootropics for your mind's performance and health. All right. And with that said, I'd just like to cover a few things that nootropics can't do for you. There's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of people trying to cash in and advertise them to do things that are just completely unrealistic. All right. So first off, taking nootropics all of a sudden is not going to allow you to overcome your genetic limitations. You cannot all of a sudden be brilliant beyond what you're innately capable of. Okay. So the abilities you're born with, it can enhance them. It can allow you to function optimally. But beyond that, you're still going to hit some sort of a ceiling. This may just help you hit that ceiling where before you may have been performing suboptimally. Okay. Using nootropics will not allow you to instantly become some productive, effective, and efficient individual. Okay. Another thing, we mentioned that it's used to treat Alzheimer's and all these mental illnesses and delay cognitive decline. This doesn't mean taking nootropics is going to give you some sort of immortality or, or complete immunity to these conditions. It may just delay them. It may improve your chances. But, you know, it's not to say that taking them, you're guaranteed never to to come in, in, uh, in danger of of experiencing some sort of cognitive decline or illness, okay? And last but not least, and this is probably one of the most important aspects of nootropics, is they're not going to replace hard work or focus or perseverance or patience or the core values that it takes to be successful. These are to complement your foundation. And that's why we go over those pillars of productivity in our home study course like meditation, sleep, nutrition, exercise. Those are the real aspects of productivity and success. Okay? Nootropics is only meant to complement and improve them. All right? So keep that in mind when you start delving into the world of nootropics, that the benefits, while they should be noticeable, it shouldn't be night and day, because if it is, it means you had other areas that you needed to improve first. And with all that said, the only question I have for you is, what's holding you back from adding the miss missing pieces? So stop lying around. Success will not find you. It will not come knocking on your door. Working your 9 to 5, not challenging yourself, not trying to exceed expectations or push your own limits is not going to get you anywhere. So you really need to reevaluate where you're headed, where you want to be, and what you're going to do to get there. And consider the fact that it may be time to explore the world of nootropics. And for anyone else interested in more information, a lot more detailed information, as this was sort of just to go over the basics, and even a free ebook that I just wrote on five ways to dramatically increase your cognitive performance and health, just sign up at the link provided. All right? Thanks, everyone. Stay focused.